constraint. Constraint. Thank you, Mohammed. Okay, so a couple of uh, ground rules is that we're going to ask that people who are not part of the local area to have priority to asking questions. So and, and so please, as you ask your before you ask your question, please state your name and what country you're from. Okay? And I think we have a brother over here that actually, yeah, first down here. はい、え、日本から来ました沢田と申します。よろしくお願いいたします。え、先週のお、水曜日に韓国語礼拝を終わりまして、その後にあの、エンジンえ、王様に質問しました。Last uh, Wednesday after the Korean service, I asked um どういう質問かと言いますと、え、反しおもにのですね、が肉的に堕落したという噂を私は聞きました。え、なぜそういう噂があるのかということをですね、え、聞いたところ、え、そしたらですね、え、ヘンジン様は何のためらいのなく、それ
went back and changed it, changed it yeah. after Father ascended, showed that uh, they have motive to change it. So mm -hmm. their actions would in indicate that what Father said in prima facie is what it, is, what it says. So I think when you look at the evidence and you look at you know the understanding of principle, what's been happening to this time, you can come to a natural conclusion that yes, she did fall. I mean, that's conclusive evidence. That's if you don't believe Father as a witness, then you don't believe Father as the Lord of Second Advent. So you have to accept Father's word back to us. And so Father has spoken that Mother has fallen. Okay, we have a question down over there. Hold on, just one minute. Okay, sorry. Uh, my, my name is Ryuta Izumi. My ori originally from Japan, but uh, uh, now uh, mission country is Poland. Uh, sorry, I speak just only in Japanese English. Uh, sorry, <laughs> I, I, my question is about uh, marine industry for the future, because uh, uh, true father likes fishing, and I think he promotes uh, marine industry. But uh, listen, nowadays uh, this marine industry looks like uh, far from church activity. Uh, for example, uh, in Japan, uh, Mr. Sato established some kind of company. And uh, uh, he said, uh, uh, based on uh, True Father's idea, but the uh, Family Federation doesn't like it and looks like their activity is far from church activity. But what is your opinion about uh, uh, this marine industry? What is the opinion of uh, Sanctuary Church well, about this? Uh, I want Sanctuary <laughs> Church's position is very clear. The Father is the returning Lord. He is the Lord of the Second Advent. So he's the Messiah. That means that everything Father does is not as a human would do it, because he's basically the living body of God on earth. And so you have to, that's the main point you have to accept when you, under, when you, when you accept sanctuary teaching, is that Father is the Messiah. So when, whenever Father does an activity, it's not a human activity. He doesn't do fishing because he likes it. He does fishing because it is a part of God's providence on this earth. And so our position is that the reason why Father did fishing and trying to develop the fishing industry is that is part of God's providence or God's will and the expression of God's will on earth. And so that is a, ver a providential industry. The, the fishing and outdoor sports industry is what Father designated as a type of work which will bring you closer in relationship to understanding the principle and God's will on earth. Uh, my name is Johann Hobel. I'm from Austria. I have two short questions. Uh, first one is, uh, what about the blessings Mother did the last years and maybe next years? What about these blessings? Well, our the sanctuary position is very clear on the blessings which Mother has conducted alone. She is conducting those blessings as a fallen woman, mm. and therefore those blessings are uniting the people who are receiving Mother's blessing, not with God, but with Satan. So she's taking everybody who receives Mother's blessing is actually being grafted into the satanic lineage mm -hmm. and will be taken to hell with her. They have to, uh, for them, it's only way. Uh, once, to get they, the once, again. You, once you receive Mother's blessing, it's the same as falling. Mm -hmm. So you would have to return back to Father's lineage. Mother's blessing. Mother's blessing. Yes, un, as a first generation, if you're a second generation yourself. Yeah, yes, 
Another question is uh, uh, we saw on the table uh, uh, 11 candles. Mm -hmm. What is the meaning, meaning, meaning of 11 candles? Father says that in the final, in the final, in the, uh, towards the end of his life, basically, in order to enter the God's kingdom, you have to transcend the number of perfection, which is, of ten. course, the number of perfection is 10. So you have to go one beyond it, and that's 11. Book Constitution. There is a. Oh, my name is uh, Tadashi Iganashi from uh, Las Vegas. And uh, in the Choing Book Constitution, uh, there is a regulation about uh, 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 controlled substance mm -hmm. to be regulated by the state. And since I came from Las Vegas, how about the gambling? Is there any regulation? We do not regulate gambling in the Constitution because the kingdom of heaven is a world of freedom and responsibility where individuals who are kings and sovereigns in God's kingdom have freedom and responsibility to de determine what God wants them to do and the God, what God desires them to do in their lives. So as the government of Chanagok, we will not force people to do good because God gave us an all of a choice to do good or evil. But it is in our desire to become close in relationship to, the, to God that we choose to do good. And because we choose to good, do good, then we can love God and have that give and take relationship with him. So the Chanago Constitution will not take away people's freedoms mm -hmm. to decide to love God. But if you're going to let people decide to love God, then you have to let the, give them the freedom to hate God. And so we, if you take away that freedom, then you cannot <coughs> honestly love God. And therefore, in, the, in Chanel Guk, if you choose to do evil and to hate God, you can do that. But in a society where people are all free and responsible, almost everybody is going to choose to love God. And mm -hmm. so if you choose to do evil, you will be quickly ostracized. Yep. But you will not be ostracized by the government. You will be ostracized by the kings of Chanogu, the citizens of Chanogu. Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, Is the lineage of Jesus uh, connected to the lineage of True Father? We believe the position of sanctuary is very clear. What, we, what, we, what Father said before he went to the spirit world, he talked about the principle of the God of night and the God of day. And the way he described the God of night, he described the God of night as being the God that existed before creation. And so God, that God is the eternal God. And then he described the God of day. He described the God of day as being the being which came into existence after creation. So the God of day is a created being. But the confusion which many brothers and sisters have, they think there can only be one God of day. This is not true. There are thousands of gods of day. It's anybody who holds authority on earth is like a visible God of day. The problem is, is that the God of day in the fallen world has separated from the God of night and does not follow the directions of the God of night. And that is why you have the fallen world. When God's direct dominion is established, when God as the eternal God is in the spirit world and his created being, his vessel, which is now the second king, his son it tru fully accepts his responsibility and unites with the spirit of the eternal God of night, then that creates the direct dominion of God. And so all the other false gods or the false 
gods of days will be pushed away. And so this is the point which, you know, which is very important to understand. So when we look at this point, then we see basically with Father, what he said was basically he existed before he was born. So this is the same teaching of Christ in the first coming. So basically when we understand Christology from the, from the, from the Christian point of view is that God existed as the eternal God and then descended to the earth as Jesus Christ and then returned to, back to the Christ head. Basically what Father is saying is that God from the Christ head came back to the earth as Reverend Sun Myung Moon or the Lord of the Second Advent and then returned back to the Godhead as the God of Night. So if you understand the, the theology or the Christiology which Father is teaching, he is basically saying that God, the eternal God, the Creator, Jesus Christ, and Christ in the Second Coming, Reverend Sun Myung Moon, these three are the same person, the same spirit. So the teaching of Sanctuary Church is that Jesus Christ and Father are the same spirit, same person.日本語で失礼いたしますえっとアメリカの星野と申しますえっとですね原理本体論の中のですねえ神様は二つの聖書記を持っているという表現がございます二千十二年の版のえ原理本体論の日本語版にえ十三ページのところで読みました and uh, in this uh, Japanese edition, it says that God has uh, two uh, sexual organs. Uh, is this an appropriate uh, interpretation? Uh, え、男性と女性の性食器を持っている。いう表現はどうかなと。ちょっと疑問に思いました。I can understand that the God of Night would as he was in the part of his creation that the God of Night would have created the female sexual organ, but I wonder whether it's appropriate to say that the God of Night actually possesses both the sexual. The position of Sanctuary Church is very clear. I think in the in Father Chan Chung Young, he states very clearly that God is the Father. So God is the predominant ultimate subject partner. And he expresses and he reveals himself as predominantly subjective or masculine. He, of course, has feminine characteristics, but that is his minor characteristics, not his major characteristics. So when he created the creation and the ultimate object partner, which is women, then women is fully manifested as predominantly feminine or objective with the feminine sexual organ. So God is expressed predominantly as the masculine father. With dual characteristics. それは、えっと、聖書記を持って、え、持っているという両方の聖書記を持っているということでよろしいでしょうか? So so is it uh, appropriate to say that uh, God has both sexual organs? We are, our position is basically the Chang Chang Yang is the interpretation which we are understanding is Father's interpretation that God is the masculine subjective partner. So. I think I answered your question. A masculine subjective partner would have a, a penis. <laughs> would you like me to be more clear? <laughs> 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 <laughs>
。そうですね。女性の聖書記も持っている神様ということの表現はあまり適切じゃないように思いますけども、それはどうでしょうか。So it seems to me that it's not appropriate to say that the God also has the female、uh, sexual organ.、Uh, would you agree? Our position is very clear. We will not touch or edit source documentation which was left during Father's life. And so, all of you wonderful, intelligent theologians are free to debate as much as you want. <laughs> But the teaching is very clear. We are abiding by the teaching in the Chan Sang Gyeong that God is the masculine subjective partner. Yo, go, got it. Yo, go, got it. Is directed、uh, to the king、uh, because of your Buddhism. And, and the queen told me、um, that it teaches you to monitor your own thinking, right? So,、mm -hmm. so this question is about meritocratic thinking. Like, you know, some people are coming through Christianity and、uh, your advocacy into the liberation of grace, right? And we know that family fed is、uh, pretty Old Testament in, in, in deeds orientation. De、uh, do this, do this, do this so that you can、mm -hmm. have this. So, this two part question.、Um, you had said once that、uh, people who are meritocratic,、uh, they, you suggested that they don't know they're meritocratic. And if you could explain what that's like, maybe so that people can start to do, do some kind of self questioning or something. And the second part of the、uh, question is can the kingdom tolerate, how much can the kingdom tolerate meritocratic thinking? I mean, is it something we have to like totally like, get rid of, or can we kind of tolerate it?、Uh, I, think, I think that, you know, you're talking about work salvation. And I think that's, that's the most important thing. In, in the real world, of course, meritocracy is very important. You know, even in, the free, in a free and responsible economy or in Chinese Google, mer meritocracy is very important because the people who serve their customers the best will be rewarded the most. Right? So, meritocracy is a natural part of the kingdom. However, when we apply the meritocracy to salvation, that's where the problem is. Arises, right? So in human interaction, meritocracy is a very important thing. Like, even if you do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, for example, you don't get promoted unless you deserve it. You know, you have to defeat all the blue belts or purple belts. You know, you, there is, you have to merit it. And、um, so, even in, the, in a free、uh, marketplace, or like Chanigo, which is free and responsible, meritocracy will be very, will always be there. But、um, when we talk about salvation, that's a different thing because God gives a very clear standard、uh, in the Ten Commandments. And no matter how perfect you are, if you compare yourself to the Ten Commandments, right, if you compare, it says, of course, do not take any idols, do not worship any other gods, but me, et cetera. We worship other things all the time. Where you could worship money, you could worship power, you could worship fame, you could worship your desires, you could worship your dreams, you could worship idols, you could worship, like you were saying, right? Some artist, right? Some artist or whatever.、Um, the Ten Commandments also say do not commit you know, stealing, don't lie. But if you think about even, when, even a small lie is still a lie. And God does not lie. See, God is truth, but He doesn't lie. So, even a small lie for God is huge because God does not lie. So, even a tiny, tiny small lie that we think is a small lie is enormous. It's like,、um, 
it's like uh, in the white snow, let's say is a whole uh, land of white snow, and there's this huge, you know, uh, mountain that is a different color. Right? It's, it stands out so clearly. Um, so if you look at, if anybody looks at themselves in light of God's perfection or God's holiness, then obviously we do not merit to be near God. We don't merit it. We cannot merit on our own uh, actions being near the most holy being, you know, in the, in the universe, right? So when we look at that, you know, we have lies, small lies are still huge, huge in terms of God's perspective. Even if you, if you stole something when you, were, when you were young, you stole a little pencil or, you know, a little candy here or, or you stole somebody's time or you, you downloaded something from the internet like music for free and, you know, you stole that. Whatever it is, even a small stealing action is actually a, a committing an a act of thievery, right? God doesn't steal. So God, his nature is he, that he does not commit stealing or he does not commit theft. So when, even if you commit a very small th theft, even if it's like a little candy or you steal your brother's string or whatever it is, right? <laughs> You've already sinned in terms of God's perspective. That, that's, that's already separating you from God. You see what I mean? Even a small thing like that. So when we look at it from human perspective, meritocracy does matter but when we look at it in terms of when we look at it in relation to God and whether or not we will be saved and be near him or separated from him then really our actions cannot merit us to be near God because every single one here has told at least a small lie in your life you've at least stolen something small in your life <laughs> right Jesus said, if you look upon a woman with lust, another, another with lust, you have committed adultery. So even if you look this way, oh, wow, he's so, he's so, uh, she's so beautiful. Or, oh, he's so handsome. Like you were saying, compare your husband to, to the flamingo man or whatever. <laughs> Where's flamingo? Where's flamingo man? Where's flamingo son? Flamingo son. Oh, flamingo son over there. <laughs> right? <laughs> then, <laughs> you see? So, if you look at then, so Jesus said that clearly. And so in your heart, then you've committed adultery. You've cheated on your husband. You see? And so that does not bring you near God. That separates you from God. You see? So in light of God's tankment, in light of God's perfection, our merit does not bring us to God. Right? It's the merit of God and God's Son that brings us to Him. Right? So... It's the love of God. It's the sacrifice that Jesus Christ, the sacrifice that Jesus' second coming, true Father, had to pay so that we could put on his flesh, put on him, put him on. And then when we go before God, God sees not us and our sins, but he sees true Father's victory. You see, that's a total difference. And that's why, that's why understanding grace is so important. When we're talking about in terms of salvation and our closeness with God and our relation with God, then it's not meritocracy. It's, 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 it's God's love represented through the Messiah. Right? And that's the love we put on. If we repent and put ourselves, surrender ourselves to true Father, and in the three-day sermon, we put on Father. And so when God sees us, he doesn't see us, he doesn't see all our sins, which he can, you know, nor he can see, but he sees the victory of true father. You see that? So that's the difference. But in normal interaction with human beings, of course, meritocracy is very important. And we want to, uh, you know, uh, keep your promises to fulfill your work that you have to do to work peaceably with others, serving your customers. All these, these are critical. These are very important for, you know, blessing and success in the physical world. I think yeah. w one way, you know, a lot of brothers and sisters, of course, when they think about their spiritual life of faith, they're always thinking about in terms of greater indemnity or lesser indemnity. What can I do to 
you know, I'll leave God's suffering and God's suffering heart like Father did and stuff like that. But we have to understand what, what the goal is, right? <coughs> the goal is that relationship and that closeness to God, to be his object partner who can reflect and reciprocate God's love. And so that we can become closer to God in love, right? But the big problem of the idea of, of religious merit or religious merit, meritocracy and religiosity is that often as church members, we are not being instructed in how to have that direct relationship with the Creator and that love with the Creator. Instead, that understanding of religious meritocracy is being filtered through a hierarchy which says you have to do these things for the church. And so then you, 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 then, then you have a problem there because you're not serving one master, you're serving two masters. You're serving <laughs> God plus the hierarchy. And so this is the challenge that we have in trying to define and achieve religious merit. Because depending on the goals that you pursue, you're going to get very different results. If you pursue the goal of being meritorious in the religious organization, then you're actually not pursuing your relationship with God to be in love with God. Mm. You're pursuing the relationship of love of the hierarchy. And and as a result, when you see biblical history, especially fallen biblical history, you'll always see the separation which God does to his people because they get always invaded by Satan. And, and the sa satanic force which we always see invading God's people is what? It's mammon. It's the love of material things, the love of you know, physical goods, the love of luxury, the love of hierarchy, the love of position, the love of promotion. And, e and each time God's chosen people is, to ch is challenged to decide what they love. Do they love God or do they love things? So this is the challenge that religious people face. This is the challenge which ministers face in helping their congregations grow in their love of God. Because in order to get the brothers and sisters to grow in their love of God, the ministers can't have, have to be in a position where they're more, you know, as a, as a coach, as somebody who is guiding and helping the person grow in their relationship with God. And that's one of the very difficult things which the heretic church has is that their approach to religion is to dominate and control the church members and not to bring them into a greater love relationship with God. And that's the fundamental problem. And so because they serve earthly things, they are not able to value the things which true Father and things which God values. So the Bible is very clear when you see the teaching of Christ. Jesus Christ said very clearly, if you, love, if you love the Father, you have to love the Son. You love the Father through loving the Son. And these are the exact same words which Father left the church with. He says, if you love me as true Father, then you must love the Son who I give everything to. Amen. So, as brothers and sisters who love true father and true parents, because true father is true parent, we have to understand his teaching so that we can be more fully in love with our father. Amen. And so that we can bring him joy. Well, in the end, God says, yeah, I really like you. You're, I love you. You're my son. Or he says, boy, you're an arrogant prick. 
Get out of my house. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what comes down to. I like that. I like that. <laughs> Actually, over here we have one. <laughs> From Italy. I, I want to ask you a question about champion providence, the liberation. Sure. I understand clearly that the liberation stands after Trafalgar's ascension and at Valley. Mm -hmm. uh, but before, but you're referring to the 210 generation. Yeah. And also, I, uh, now you liberate the fetus. And I understood that liberation, the donation we did for liberation of fetus before our ascension, they are not practically right because uh, the teaching of Kim Jong Nam were, were wrong. So now, before father's ascension, besides liberating the 210 generation, we, we, we liberate collective, um, correlative, uh, I mean, uh, relatives of. And then we liberated uh, special figures, you know, any kind of per person in the spirit world, famous persons, or fr our friends, mm -hmm. or we liberated even <coughs> uh, spirits haunting the uh, disturbing the body, haunting places. So we, we were asked to liberate many things. I went to Champion with the desire to create these absolutely good spirits to help father, to help haunt Continue at that time in the spirit world. I'm just wondering whether this liberation before Father Ascensions of different kinds were valid or the, not. The sanctuary church's position is very clear. Father is the Lord of the Second Advent, so everything that Father does, we honor. And so we seek to understand and love Father for the truth of, of what she is. And so we encourage all brothers and sisters to read all of Father's documents and discuss to try to better understand true Father. Because as you can see, even in, in the church organization which Father was running, Father was teaching about God and the relationship with God and instructing in many teachings. But when brothers and sisters heard teachings on things like abortion, the meaning was completely opposite to what Father was teaching. So you can see there that there's very clear examples where Father says one thing and then the organization says another thing. So in that case, who do we follow? Father. Father. So this is our challenge. As we, as we le seek to improve and enhance and develop our relationship with Father. We want to separate the things that Father teaches from the things that the church teaches. And we want to throw away the things that the church teaches and only hang on to what Father teaches. My name is Morita. In Japan, I'm the coach. And uh, could you translate? あの、ま、ま、まで this may be, you may find this question strange given what has already been said, but I would like to uh, clarify um, up to what point were the uh, ancestor liberations performed in Chongkyo uh, valid? In my opinion, it would be up to the point where uh, of our father's uh, Songwa, uh, but uh, can you confirm that? We are only accepting valid up to father Songwa, and he only authorized up to 210 generations. Okay. 
そのオリジナルの神様のその神聖をその不動物から感じているそういう意味で世を喜ぶ神と我々は言っているわけですねですから神道の神道の基本は結局、えー、そこの拝むべきものは何もなくて結局何があるかというと、えーまあ、ユダの、まあ、10回に似たものはですねこれが神道の中にあるだけなんですねですから矢を喜ぶ神という言い方はちょっと日本人には馴染めないですね。すべてにそこに神があるというふうに日本人は信仰しているみたいだと言われたことは、なかなか手元的に言いにくいんですが、これどう考えですか In Japan,、uh, we have the expression that Yao Yoroz no Kami, which、uh, translated literally means、uh, 8 million gods.、Uh, this is、uh, often understood, misunderstood by,、uh, people, by other people、uh, who are not deeply familiar with Shinto. As meaning the Japanese believe that there is a God in each and every、uh, object.、Uh, but this is not,、uh, this is not accurate. Uh, what what uh, this expression, Yao Yoros no Kami, actually means is that uh, we, uh, we uh, experience the divine, the divine nature、uh, in each, uh, in, in, every, in every object, in every created、uh, object. And、uh, we're not worshiping、uh, there. So it is not accurate to say that.、Uh, Uh, we are worshiping a God、uh, in the created objects, so that we are worshiping God in nature, but that we are experiencing divine nature. Now, Now, I mean, we understand what the pagans say about their understanding of God, but、mm-hmm. when you talk about eight million gods, that is standard paganism. <laughs> it's, the, it's the same standard paganism as in India. I mean, that's exactly what they say when they're talking about a God in every being, the divinity in every de- being. And if you look at ancient Greek history and Roman history, they're all in reference to pagan deities. So the position of sanctuary is very clear. All pagan deities are fallen gods of day, they are created beings who have assumed to become gods. When they have no right to, because there is only one eternal God. To claim as a fallen being that you are God is to separate from God. And so we do not accept any pagans as God. We only accept one eternal God. And we only, the only role which a God of day or an authority on this earth can play is to be in absolute obedience and in love relationship with the eternal Creator. And our understanding from Father's teaching is that Father says that He will always be with us because true parents will always be on the earth. And so that is what the kingships represent. Father is the first king, the second king is the true parents on earth. The, the, my brother now is Father's body, and Father's spirit lives in him as the king. And when he dies and goes to the spirit world, his, thir- his son, Shinjun, will be Father's body and Father's spirit will live in him. So we only accept one kingship, which Father left. We only accept one God. And in order to be saved, you have to have the relationship with God's lineage and God's blood. You have to have. The blessing of the blood of Christ on you to be allowed to be entered into the kingdom of heaven. No blood, no heaven. My name is Ogata. I came from the Yasunaga Church in Kumamoto.、えー、Inoue Bokushito, Hoka, Jurok Mede, Konkai, Wa, Kono, Pennsylvania, Ni Kimashita. We are sixteen of us came with our pastor, the Reverend Inoue,、uh, to Pennsylvania. Kumamoto, no, Jishi, no, Toki, Niwa, Honto, Ni, Okera, Nari, Mashita. Thank you very much、uh, for taking care of us、uh, at the time of the、uh, earthquake in Kumamoto. Shippan, Oto, Shite, Honto, Ni, その生き残るという内容が、えー、ヒョンジン様の御言葉によって本当に、えー、実感をしています。Uh, us, survival, uh, 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 
、えー、この、えー、アメリカに来る前までにとにかくその生き残れと軍人様は、えー、御言葉の中でよく言われていますで、えー、ここに来るまでに毎週木曜金,金曜土曜日曜と、えー、ヒョンジン様の御言葉をの説教をセミナーという形で勉強してきました。その中で生き残るためにまず、えー、私たちはわからないのでその熊本の地震で。受けたものっていうのは本当に水がなければならないし食べ物がなければならないし本当に自分たちで生き残っていかなければならないということを学んだしそ,のないそれで救われた内容は3万7千民が本当にこのその前に会をしてくださったゆえに私たちは守られたと思ってます。そのような中で私たちは皆さんに、えー、この戦いトラえこの 1% の本当にこう悪魔崇拝者が本当に握っていてでそのためにこのあのやろうとしている世界をまずこうせ、えー、と胎児たちを解怨してくださることにおいてそして本当に先駆けて霊界を整えてくださるお父様とヒョンジン二大王様がおられてそして本当にその中で私たちはいかに備えていくべきかと。お父様が、あのヒョンジン様が言われたブッシュクラフトもあの熊本の中でしてきましたし、そして水の、えー、浄化の内容も、あれも注文して、買って、実験もしてきましたし、キャンプもしてきましたし、もうすべてヒョンジン様言われている内容、そして釜でご飯も炊いて、本当に見ましたし、たくさん備えてきました。畑も作りました。いちょっと待ってください。<笑><笑> Uh, in the, uh, we have the American、uh, US election coming up, and、uh, clearly Clinton is、uh, going up against、uh, Trump, and we really, it's absolutely necessary that uh, uh, Trump wins. And the king has、uh, also、uh, prepared the spirit world uh, by, um, by uh, liberating uh, the uh, unborn uh, children. Uh, in Kumamoto, we've, we've, really, we've been thinking what we need to do to prepare for the future. And so, for example,、uh, we've、uh, learned how to、uh, purify water and、uh, We, got, we, bought, we purchased the items that the king recommended and we've, uh, uh, we've uh, uh, experimented with them. We've, we've had experience with them. We've also created a, our own、uh, field、uh, for food.、Uh, yeah.その中で、えー、ヒョンジン様
but because she has chosen the path to separate, then now we have a judgment. And so the nature of this judgment is what we, what we are seeking to understand. And as we come closer and closer to this election, we can see the nature of the judgment more clearly. So we can see in the microcosmic level that the king is fighting the fallen mother. And so you have the Adam authority fighting the fallen Eve usurpation. And you are seeing the same parallel in the, in the national election in America. You are seeing this fallen woman, Hillary Clinton, fighting Trump, who is a masculine Adam type figure. And so depending on what happens at, this, at, the, micro, at the macrocosmic level is going to be determining how the judgment proceeds. If the American people vote for Hillary and make her president, then they have chosen to side with fallen Eve. So that would mean that the people would be judged. And you can see from Hillary Clinton what her platform is in this election. She is very much making Russia the enemy and very much pursuing rhetoric which will bring us into war with Russia. So it's very clear if Hillary Clinton is elected, she's going to start war with Russia. If war with Russia is started, Putin has stated very clearly he will go nuclear very fast. So we could see a nuclear holocaust happen very quickly if Putin, if, if Hillary Clinton is elected. Trump, on the other hand, is very clear on his position. His position is he wants to have peace with other nations and other sovereign states like Russia. But he wants to make war against the government. He wants to judge the government. He wants to bring judgment on the government, on the archangel specifically so that God's judgment goes only on the government and not on the people. So this is the opportunity for us to gain blessing. If the people vote for Trump, then the judgment will go on the government and its people more than it will go on all the people. This is why, depending on who wins this election, the nature of God's judgment on this world will be dramatically different. If Trump wins, all the governments in the world will be judged, but the people will be saved. to say uh, happy school children's day on. Yeah, I, I am from, from originally from Philippines, mm -hmm. but I live in Macau for 20 years. I, I watched the video since last year, and I have consolidated uh, factors uh, to, for me to, to believe the, the, the second king is the right one here. These are the factors. One, the signatory of, of two father. And, and the second one, the crowning three times. And uh, based on the Asian and European tradition, the one to inherit the king heir should be the son. Mm -hmm. And also based on, on the lineage, the one who can carry the lineage is only the son. Mm -hmm. The son can only multiply by a male child, not, not, not a woman. So my, my question is, uh, does not really affect my belief, but I still have to clarify something. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, on the previous uh, videos, I heard that uh, there's some inconsistency of what Hong Jinem is saying. Uh, he said that mother is not supporting him as a king, but I saw some video that uh, mother put his name in the signatory like uh, in the in the video, in the like video. Uh, mother is pushing you, uh, pushing father to to put your name. Uh, I don't. Uh, the, the the signatory. I don't know. If I'm wrong, this does not affect mine. Why is the will? The will. Two times. Two times.
that's one of, of my question, why it happened. And also, and also you're saying before that if, 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 if mother is around, there will be no problem of, of subjectivity because as long as mother is alive, he is going to take care of all. I think the, the tradition of kingship is very clear. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. The, the queen mother doesn't become the king because she's a woman and she doesn't have the lineage. So the, tra the king tradition of kingship is very clear. In that case where the queen mother tries to usurp the throne, it's the king's responsibility to arrest her and execute her. That's the king's responsibility. It's the same thing as we study the Bible. What do we study when we study principle? When we study principle, we learn that you know, after the fall of Eve, if the king or the Adam's authority had stood strong and chastised her, you know, even got rid of her, then God's providence would not have gone the direction of the fallen world. It could have been restored in that generation with a new Eve. So it is very important for the subject partner to keep the subject position. You cannot leave that subject position because that's what's required by God in the principle of creation to fulfill the role of subject object and then of Cain and Abel in order for, for that to create the foundation for God's sovereignty on this earth through his lineage. So it's just not possible for the king to submit to his mother, especially when the father has ascended. The mother must submit to the king. Okay, the second question is directed to Dr. Kim Nim. Mm -hmm. It's about politics in Asia. Okay, uh, Philippines is one, the only Christian nation in Asia. And you know that we have been uh, conniving with America for a long time, yeah. 20 years. And now our president is so vocal against Western uh, with the, okay, the, the Americans and the mm -hmm. European. Now, as a Christian nation, now he's conniving with China and Russia. Mm -hmm. what, what, is the, what do you think about the, I mean, the significance of this well, one? Well, this is the great confusion of this age because the countries which used to be good are, are bad, and the countries which used to be bad are in some ways better, and there's nobody who's good or bad. Everybody's all jumbled up in this big mess. This is the problem. This is the problem of relativism. And relativism is what? It's Satan's teaching. Mm -hmm. So this is why when everything good and evil gets jumbled up and you can't tell what's good and evil, then God divides and separates good and evil. And this is, the pro this is what the king is doing when he separates from his mother. He's separating from good and evil so that it's very clear he's preserving his position. So what we can see what happened in the Philippines is that first the Philippines, the president wanted to maintain the relationship with the United States. And so he asked America to defend his territory in the Spratly Islands around those seas. Right. And so you know, then, then the US supported the Philippines in, in the international courts and they got the ruling to say that Chinese shouldn't be there. But they really, America didn't really show a force to keep China away from those seas. They didn't send aircraft carriers. They didn't send a lot of military assets. And so uh, seeing America's relatively weak action, the president basically said, OK, between this conflict between China and America, Russia is very weak, and China is just getting stronger. America is going to lose, so I'm going to side with China. Mm -hmm. That's what the president is doing right now. So do you think the, the and so there, there is a fundamental problem with America. The fundamental problem is, is when Father was on the earth, he said, the UN is Cain UN. What is Cain UN? It's satanic. So what the UN, which this, uh, you, the satanic UN, which they're trying to form, or this new world order, this world government, is not a God-centered world government. It's a dictatorship. <laughs> and so right now, when people look at this world government, there's, you know, there, we, we, there's great confusion because Father wanted to make the one world-centered 
on God. But now this government is actually being one world centered on Satan. This is the problem. And so as this new world order is pushing forward, nations are saying, whoa, wait a minute. This is terrible. We are going to become slaves to this world government. And so Putin is saying, OK, I don't want to be part of this dictatorship. I want my sovereignty. I want to be the controller of Russia. And so it's one thing is when you look at Putin, he's a dictator, so he has many bad aspects. On the other hand, he's saying, I want to be sovereign, which is what God wants. And it's the same situation with, with Duarte in the Philippines. Because the center is not following the king, there is only confusion and there is no good and evil. This is the problem. So if you want to get to being good, we have to center on Christ. Because only Christ gives us the gifts of God. Only Christ can bring the able UN. So what is the able UN? It's the constitution of Chanil Guk. There, there is only one solution for one world under God. That is the constitution of Chanil Guk, which Sanctuary Church and the Second King has presented to the world. There is no other path to world peace or world unity. You, men cannot make peace because men cannot give the gifts of God. Gifts of God only come from God. They only come when we accept Christ as our Father. Yes, before I end this one, but I just want to mention to everybody that President Duterte actually has a friend, a member, and his, uh, his uh, slogan is that State and religion should separate, but state and God should not separate. So I feel like there's some significance of this one. Thank you very much. Yes, there is a difference between religion and God. That's the point we're making. Okay, thank you. え、本日はね、朝教会の方たちが来てらっしゃいますけれども、え、島原の乱のですね、3万7000名を解怨された、その直後に、え、4日後にですね、熊本地震がありました。today uh, we have that we were probably at Saga Church in Kumamoto, but uh, of course the uh, Kumamoto earthquake occurred 4 days after the king liberated uh, the 37,000 martyrs of uh, Shinobara. この地震のエネルギーをですね、その21年前にあった阪神淡路大震災のエネルギーとほぼ同じだと言われています。え、そのコベ、え、阪神淡路では6000名のですね、方々が亡くなりました。In the ところ、熊本地震では地震で直接亡くなった方は50名。そして関連死含めると110名です。え、熊本、50 damage or the, the number of people died uh, in Kumamoto was, was reduced as a direct result of the fact that the martyrs were, 37,000 martyrs were liberated. And I think what really illustrates this is the fact that the epicenter was in the exact location of the Yasunaga church, but the church itself uh, was not damaged. Well, you know, we you have to you have to be careful how you look at what is good and bad. 
Because one of the problems which we as human beings face and get into is that we determine, we think good and bad is determined by us. And so we say, okay, if there was an earthquake and X number of people died, and, and, and that, that must be bad. And, but this is a fundamental flaw. Because then you're defining good and bad based on human morality. And if you do that, then you get back into relativism, which is, I can be God. So for us to really understand what is good and what is bad, we have to understand what the definition of good or badness is, what is righteousness and what is sinfulness. And understanding righteousness and sinf sinfulness is very easy. It's not difficult. The definition is very simple. And the simplicity of the definition explains everything in God's providential history of what God sees as being right and what God sees as being wrong. Because when we look at the, the providence of God, especially when he led Moses to the you know, the banks of Canaan. And then he sent Joshua with Caleb into, into Canaan to conquer it. What did they do after they brought down the walls of Jericho? They killed every man, woman, and children. Was that good or was that bad? By what definition? What, so what is God's definition of goodness? There is only one definition which can explain everything in the Bible, in providential history, in terms of this is righteousness and this is sinfulness. And the only definition which satisfies all cases in, in the biblical history is righteousness or goodness is that which brings you closer to God. Sinfulness is that which separates you from God. If you understand good and bad from this principle, then you can understand all the events of the Bible from God's point of view. Remember, God created humanity and this earth to be his creation, his children. The problem is after his creation, because the fall, the creation was infected by satanic lineage. And so if you look at the Bible, God is seeking to remove or destroy or kill Satan's lineage on this earth. This is biblical history. So when we look at righteousness from God's point of view, we say it was if God wills it and that is what will bring us closer to God, that is righteous and good. This is how we must understand righteousness and goodness. And this is how we must understand the judgment which is coming. Because the judgment which God brings is ultimately so that we can be restored to our position and that we can be with God. Hello, my name is Hopi Garashi from uh, Las Vegas. I, j as a qu I was a former Christian, so I just want to say one thing about uh, Sanctuary Church separating himself from uh, Hawk Jahan Moon. Jesus, I just, this is nothing new to you, but I just want to comment. Jesus left his mother. At one point in the Bible, we read that Jesus was looking for her son. He was in the temple. And what did Jesus say when they said, your mother is looking for you? He said, who's my mother? Who's my brother? Only those that do the will of God. So I just, I just have to get that out. Also about righteousness and good and bad. The way I've looked about how God 
during the time of Noah, all the people, the evil people, were in the flood and they drowned. For God so loves the world because they're, they, you need a body, a physical body to do evil deeds. God put those people in the spirit world to stop doing evil, but God loves them. And God put them away like in prison. But I know that True Father has a plan to save everyone through the uh, divine principle of resurrection. I just had to share that. I'm sorry. But, uh, but my question is this. It's about the holy wine. Mm -hmm. um, for example, as we witness to uh, family fed fraud members and those who took the holy wine, and then we bring them over, and they convert to sanctuary to their king. Uh, before they take the new wine, do, does there have to be some condition? And the reason I ask this is because I took that holy wine. I was on the staff at the family fed in Las Vegas. I was on the preparation mm -hmm. for the August 19th uh, blessing. And I was still not sure about sanctuary at that time. My husband was 100%. So I begged him to come with me, and I drank, but he, he wouldn't drink it. And then later, when I read somewhere that Mother, uh, that Hak Chahan said that in the womb, she knew the truth. That did it for me, okay? <laughs> that did it for me. And so then I converted and united with my husband 100%, and we ordered the kit, okay, mm -hmm. and the blessing kit from Sanctuary, and we did our ceremony. The blessing, I took that wine uh, August 19th, but we did the ceremony on uh, September 25th. So we're in our 40 day separation. We will do our ceremony three-day ceremony in four days. <laughs> but uh, be but uh, seriously, before I do that uh, three-day ceremony, my question is, um, do I have to do some condition? And this is going to well, be for other people. We, 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 those are the things which the king is ruling on on a weekly basis, and he re ruled on those kind of cases. So your case fits his, ru his ruling. I Maybe Tim can correct me if I don't get the ruling exactly correct. Or would you like to explain the ruling which the king ruled on? First of all, you asked uh, if there's any condition that's necessary before taking the wine. Uh, there's no condition necessary before taking the wine. Uh, anyone can uh, take the wine. Uh, and then uh, you ordered a blessing kit. That was good. And then uh, when you perform the blessing, then you need to uh, uh, use uh, you need to use the blessing kit along with the video of the king online, so that you are uh, participating in the whichever video that you choose uh, of the king's blessings, uh, since uh, uh, there are a number of them beginning in uh, April 21st of last year. Uh, and then you are receiving the blessing uh, of prayer, especially, uh, from, from the king. And then, uh, as you said, you're going through your, your 40 day condition. And then, uh, after the end of the 40 day condition, yes, then uh, you need to receive a, a prayer uh, from uh, someone from that can be done by, uh, we have uh, uh, leaders around the country, or Richard Hansberg can do it, because he's going to be uh, uh, leading the sanctuary. In I think you missed the point. Igarashi, she's saying, yes, never that. Adam, yes, Adam, Adam, Adam. Adam. So from the merit um, of the, ad Adam. the Adam figure, the subject partner not leading the position, yes, thank you. then the, the condition is a little bit different. Is That's that right. Okay, so yes, yeah, so because your husband did not lead, because your husband uh, did not take the satanic wine. Uh, your case is a little bit different. Uh, you do not need to go through the entire uh, three-day ceremony uh, because uh, uh, his uh, seed, Subject which, which is he received uh, uh, through his original blessing that you received from True Father, from wh which year, what couple are you? Uh, 2075. 2075. Uh, 2075 but there's a condition. Out, so he has to always be on top. Yes, but always be on top uh, during that uh, 
that's a if, if you were on bottom, then that's a problem because yes. that's accepting subjugation by a forward mm -hmm. So when you do the three days okay. surrender, your husband can just be on top uh, all, all three days. But he is, he's not in the fallen position. He's in the uh, already in the uh, uh, restored uh, uh, body of Christ and, and a son of God's position. So just be on top of the first uh, all three days. Yes. Is that clear? Thank you. Hi, my name is Mark Walker from Ulster. Um, the about the uh, microcosmos appear to macrocosmos. I'd like to know more detail. And uh, what I, I almost uh, like uh, felt <laughs> this is like, uh, like almost a principle to work way. Well, the, the concept of microcosm to macrocosm is very clearly represented when you study the life of Christ, right? Uh, Jesus in his first coming. His ministry was very local. And his teaching was very local. But whatever he did on that local small level, it actually multiplied to actually conquer the entire world. And so this kind of microcosmic representation is what God uses to affect the change for the entire world. So Christ never became the actual emperor on the earth. But the conditions which he established was able to bring the condition, the world up to a spiritual salvation up to the top of the growth stage. And so this is what we're talking about, the microcosm and the macrocosm. Because of the situation of the church, the worldwide level foundation which Father had built was taken by, by the fallen mother, then basically history, providential history, is not being driven by what the church does, even though it was brought to the worldwide level or even the governments of the world, it is being driven by who carries God's lineage and God's seed. And so now the actions of individuals in a smaller scale at a local level, based on those interactions between providential figures at the local level, actually determine what will happen in the macro level or in the level of the entire world. And so this is what you talk about now, the, the, the parallel of current history, where you see the parallel in the microcosmic level being reflected at the macrocosmic level. It's two histories which you're seeing, but what is the cause and effect is that the microcosm is the cause for the macrocosm. So what we see is basically with the emergence of an, with a subjective masculine figure like Trump, you didn't see that emergence until the king separated from the fallen mother and chastised her. So if you were here in sanctuary three years ago, when we, we first came out here, when my, when my brother came out here in exile and I came out to support him, we were just the two of us. And we're talking with the local brothers and sisters. And they asked, what is the direction of providence? So we talked about what Father had said about providence, how it could go the direction of God's blessing or God's judgment. Clearly, we're on the path to God's judgment, to God's kingdom, kingdom through judgment. And then we talked about, well, what will, how will this microcosm, you two being here with, no, with nobody, the church foundation, all God, how are you going to carry out God's providence and save the world? Well, that's why you have to understand how God works. God works through the lineage, through the blood, through Christ in his first and second coming. And by those actions, we talked about what we would see as how God would proceed to try to save the world. And so we talked about what is necessary to bring God's kingdom would be the emergence of an able type revolution. And the criteria for an able type revolution is basically the ruling elite the ruling class has to split. There has to be a separation between good and evil. This is what the principle talks about. When Satan invades, then God is the one who divides. So there has to be a division from the top down. 
satanic or cane type revolutions are the lower classes just taking over. It's bottom rabble taking over the whole country and making a big mess. But the able type revolution, especially what you saw like in the United States, was when the leaders of the country split. And then the people who are more God-centered overcame the more satanic side. And so this is what you're seeing. When we talked about how God will proceed in the province, we said the leader of God's side in the able type revolution has to be an able side billionaire. This is before Trump came out. Mm-hmm. And you can talk to the brothers and sisters. This is exactly what we talked about. And because of the separation in the her- from the heresy of Johann Muller, then as the king pursued his anointing, and accepted his inheritance as the king, then you saw the entire world change. You saw the Trump revolution. You saw the able type billionaire emerge. So clearly, Trump is the masculine male type Adamic figure. He represents the subjectivity of man. He represents Adam who says, woman, fallen woman, I don't need you. Go to jail. (laughs) that is exactly the way we understood history to proceed based on father's teaching and the principles and as (laughs) as our understanding of principle so did history progress So this is how the microcosm determines the macrocosm. So all these understanding of providential history in the direction of the world, for sanctuary members, is not a mystery because we've discussed it. Only the heretic church is confused. (laughs) Okay. Wrap her up. (laughs) Absolutely. That's what Adam should have done to Eve. Lock her up. (laughs) You see, everything relates back to the Garden of Eden. Nothing changes. It's the same story. It's the same story. The principle is living and it is happening. And everything that is happening has been foretold here in sanctuary. あの、愛せないとまあ、どのように愛するかって、まあ、具体的な方法を聞きたいっていうか、あと、お父様は、お母様、裏切ったお母様どのように愛していかれたのかってことを聞きたいです。Well, <笑> Also, when also you lock her up, that's really showing love. <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, uh, can you tell us how <laughs> how did father love mother even when she had betrayed him? Well, when father was on the earth, he locked her up. <laughs> That's why when father left, she tried to escape the prison. <laughs> but this is why the son's responsibility is to lock her up. <laughs> so what is the solution to the Garden of Eden? You know, lock her up. <laughs> See, principle is very beautiful and very simple. It's not hard to understand. (laughs) 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 No, 
Well, I think <laughs> that's a, there's two different types of locking up. There's a <laughs> putting in prison, and there's also jujitsu. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, so that's what the Bible commands us, is for the husband to unconditionally love the wife, and the wife to unconditionally love the hu uh, respect the husband. Okay, now this is very important because usually in our modern world, we're only when we're talking about marriage, we're only talking about the husband has to unconditionally love the wife, right? But they never finish the actual Bible quote, which says, but the wife must unconditionally respect her husband. Okay, so this is what God's plan is. God's plan is for love and respect. Okay, because God knows what a man needs and God knows what a woman needs. Okay, man needs respect, woman needs love. Okay, so <clears throat> the Bible teaching is very clear and it's very, uh, God's word is, is true. The problem is, is satanic world only take one side. And they tried to only say Adam has responsibility, Eve has, Eve has no responsibility. She can do whatever she wants. And Adam has to just love whatever she does, which is ridiculous, right? That's absurd. So from a principled perspective, if, you, if your wife is acting unprincipled and is fallen, then you must do what is correct in God's eyes. You must chastise, like Kuk Jong say, you must lock her up, you must chastise her, you must expose her for her evil and not let her get away with the evil. In the same way also, God's commandment is very clear for the woman. If the husband is unrighteous before God, then that means the wife has to, still, she still has to act respectfully. She has to deal with him respectfully, but she has to be against unrighteousness, right? But how does she change and transform the husband? Not by yelling and screaming and nagging at him. That will never change him. That will only make him worse. Even though it's hard, the heart, the, even though it's hard, is by showing respect for that man. And through that showing of respect, then a conversation can begin and then things can start to come out, right? But that respect has to be there. But usually in the modern world, women are taught not to respect men at all. They're taught not to respect their fathers, not to respect their husband, not to respect men in general and to look down on them. Well, you see this in the movies, you'll see this in Korean drama, this kind of stuff. So women now in the modern day, because they are watching those kind of things all the time, become trained by that kind of satanic media. So many times when they want to change their husband or some issue, they just want to talk about it, but husband does not want to talk about it. Right? Because the woman feels that if we talk about this issue, then we can solve this issue. But the husband perspective is no, if I talk to you, all I get is nag and condemnation. You see? So he does not want to talk. Instead, a wise woman, a godly woman, will approach her husband in a wise way. She'll approach him with a wise counsel. So she will be the type of woman who will uh, respect his space, his time, his timing, respect that he needs, uh, that the conversation does have to happen, but that it will happen, for example, my wife, if she really needs to talk to me about something, then she will ask me, tomorrow, 8 o'clock, 30 minutes, okay? She will not disrespect my time. Uh, also, my children learn this too. They should not disrespect daddy's time. When daddy's teaching you jujitsu or MMA or this kind of stuff, 
don't disrespect my time. Right? And so she would show that kind of respect. And then as a father and as a man, then it's very easy for me to agree to discuss that issue during that time. So that's a very practical thing. Okay. That's how she shows respect to her husband. By not just saying, I, want, I need to talk about this now. I want to talk this now. I'm so top top I'm so oh. now 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 now. No. This is not respect. Right? And you see, the women who do that have terrible terrible relationship with their husband. You can see the result. So if you want a terrible relationship with your husband, you want to curse upon your family. You follow those women. <laughs> but if you want a blessing upon your family, you have to follow women who are godly, who know how to deal with their husbands in a God's godly way. And the women who know how to deal with their husband in a godly way will respect their husband because it's not only because the husband is respectable, okay? It's because she's obeying God and bringing joy to God when the husband is, she feel very disres not respectable. But she's obeying God's commandment to respect him. So that's hard to do. But that makes her grow spiritually. And that makes her understand God's love for her more deeply. If she does it. If she really does it. Because that is the way to actually come into the man's uh, presence. And his, and his opening slowly his, what all the women want, his vulnerability. You want your husband to be vulnerable. You want him to share with you. You want him to tell you his heart. But you can't just demand that from a man because a man is trained never to be vulnerable. Right? Whereas girls on the other side, you're taught to be vulnerable from a very young age. That's how you make friends with other girls, by being vulnerable and opening yourself up, you know, socially, right, to, to your friends. But men are the other way. <clears throat> so that is a very important aspect practically of marriage and blessed life. Practically, practically, not theologically, but practically. <clears throat> and also the flip side of that is as a man. Paul talks about the different aspects of love. Right? He talks about love as being... Uh, having endurance, what the Bible calls forbearance, patience. So love, of course, speaks truth to evil. So if, if the wife is acting evil, then the husband's responsibility is to call her evil. It's his responsibility. He must say, you are an evil woman. You are an evil woman. You are acting evil in this way. You are committing sin against God. So it is his responsibility to do that, just like he has this the husband must submit to God, and he must be judged by God in the same way the wife, the Bible says the wife must submit to her husband. Okay, that means, that means she has to be in the object position. So if the wife is trying to be in a subject position, then the husband has to be clear with her that that is not principle. At the same time, the husband also, un unconditional love, you know, when the wife, when practically, when the, if there is some disagreement with the wife, it means also to be patient. The Bible also talks to be kind. And the problem with, there's a lot of problems. With a lot of fallen women, if a husband is kind and patient, they usually think he's weak. The, a lot of fallen women have that kind of perspective. But godly women should not see kindness and patience as weakness because if you have a relation with God you know how kind and patient he's been with you if you really understand God the Father you understand how powerful he is but how loving and how kind he, he has been right compared to the sin that you have so it's usually women who do not have a relationship with God that do not understand that kindness and patience does not equal weakness But if the woman has a relationship with God, 
she can understand, ah, very powerful, very powerful God, but very patient with me, very kind to me. Thank you, God, right? They can understand that because they have a living relationship with God. So usually godly women can understand that if their husband is patient with them and if he's kind with them, that he is exhibiting God's aspect, but doesn't mean he's weak. He's still very, he can still be very powerful. So like in Asia, we say like mushi, right? Mushi. It's very important that if the husband is acting kindly or acting patient, that you don't mushi him. Because if you mushi him, that means you're totally disrespecting his practice of forbearance for you. Right? So, so, Godly women who have relationship with God understand God's power, his masculine strength, the power he can kill, he can destroy, he can bring down civilizations, he can... But at the same time, he is patient and kind. This is very important. So for example, one thing that's really wonderful and God has blessed us with, this whole community with, is the practice of like... Uh, very hard type martial art training. Okay? So in the very hard types of martial arts training, like Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu or kickboxing or MMA, this kind of thing, if women's train together with men, you will see big difference in power. Big, big difference. So women who train in these kind of harder arts, of course, they become very strong compared to normal women, very strong. Even can defeat normal men, so they become very strong. But they do not mushy men's power because they know, even though they are strong compared to normal people, if they have to fight with a master who is also a man, very strong, they lose. So then they respect the physical nature of, of men. So also, you know, problem with a lot of uh, Japanese men and Asian men now in, the mo in modern day is the men have become so women-like. This is a problem. Right? So the w men have become very weak. And they just do computer game or just the internet all the time. And they are not developing their masculine traits. They're not weightlifting and they're not building themselves to become more masculine. They don't put any attention on that. And they become so feminine. So then, then, and the society then creates the men very, very like women. So the woman is very unattracted to the man. And then they are attracted to, many times, bad men who do those things. So it's important also, Father uh, at, made the men do very uh, difficult things too, like do my hard martial art training or do, or, you know, exercise, make you stronger, fa masculine. Father loves that. He likes when men are masculine and, po and powerful. Um, and also like hunting and fishing even if you're just working on the farming things, you become very strong, right? So these kind of aspects too, in the modern day, many men do not do that and they become very, very feminine. But they don't, but they are different from women. They still have many aspects of the man, but just their body is so, their, their physical stature is so weak. You see, but I find very important when my wife sees my physical power, right? If I'm teaching a group of young people and I'm teaching them Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or things like that, then these kids and my wife also can see my physical power. Even though I'm a very nice person, I don't act in a threatening way. But when they can see my physical power, they r immediately have a different level of respect. And oh, you know, all, and you know, then my wife can also see, wow, my husband's very strong. 
right? She can actually see that. She can feel that too. So this is also a very important part of Chinese culture of the peace, uh, militia peace police as well, is to understand this reality of the difference between men and women. You naturally learn when you do very hard type of training. You naturally will learn, okay? <coughs> so, so uh, you know, for, so I think to answer that question, practically, the, when husband is being patient or being uh, forbearance or being kind, godly women, you should not see them as weak. That's a mistake. If you mushy them, your marriage will be cursed. Okay? At the same time, at the same time, husband too should pursue things which are masculine. You should not only just do internet and video game all day. You should go out and shoot guns. and You should go out and learn hunting. And you should go out and learn Brazilian jiu-jitsu. You should do things that make you masculine too. Then that will also make your wife happier as an object partner. That I guarantee you, it will, as you get stronger, but you're still loving and patient, she will, she will appreciate that, that aspect of you in a different way. So that's very important too. The men have responsibility too. You must pursue manly, you know, masculine things too. You know, the, the modern world tell you don't do that stuff, but it's wrong. God's kingdom, you have to do that stuff. You have to learn. You are, you are the peace police. You are the peace militia. You, you are the front line. You are the king of your house. The king of your house has to fight for his country. <laughs> you have to be ready to fight. So if you have that spirit, y you will see your household culture become very different. Very different. And uh, even the women in your household become stronger. They're not weak women. You know, like my wife and also our sister-in-law live in our house. Also my daughter. She's training jujitsu and all this stuff. Compared to normal girl, they're much stronger, much stronger. Chung, uh, 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 mentally, much stronger. Mentally, much stronger. Physically, much stronger. Right? They're still very feminine. They're still, ver they're still very ladylike. Right? But that happens when the sexes can, what's in psychology called sexual, the sexes can sexually differentiate. They can be different. But that's important for a man to pursue strong things. It's very important because if the man doesn't do that and he becomes too much like a woman, then the woman cannot differentiate and then she tries to become the man and then tries to dominate him. And then that's when your household becomes cursed by Satan. So it is, it is a responsibility for men to, to pursue the things that make you strong. I think that's a really good point because, you know, a lot of people think of callings as people being called to be a minister or a policeman, but actually, before we are actually called to do an occupation, God calls us to be what? A man and a woman. A man and a woman. So if you're born as a man and you say, oh, I don't feel like I'm a man, I feel like I want to be like a woman, you are denying God. That's the challenge. You have to develop your life and your motivation and your attitude and uh, meet your fears so that you can meet God's first calling, Yes. which is when he gives you a man's body, he wants you to be a man. Mm. You have to answer that call. So not all things in life are a matter of choice. God calls you to be either a man or a woman and to fulfill his purpose of creating you. Mm -hmm. And then within that calling, he gives you freedom and responsibility so that you can develop and fulfill that role. But believe me, it is a role. It's something you have yes. to grow into. It's, so it's not something which you get automatically. 
You have to put effort into it. Absolutely. You know, they did study that shows what women hate the most in men. The, the one thing women hate the most in a man, it, any man that has it, they hate it. They don't, immediately they are unattracted to that person, that man. What that is, is a sense of neediness. If that, if that man is needy, if he's craving approval and attention. So that's why girls get attracted to bad boys usually, because they don't care about the girls. They don't even care about them. You see what I mean? They don't even care about those the bad boys. Usually, you know, they're not intimidated by girls. So the girls get attracted to them. But girls most hate, they're most unattracted to men who are very needy. Or who seem like they're constantly seeking approval. You see? So the problem is if, if when men pursue manly things and they learn how to do fighting and they learn how to do shooting guns and they learn how to, when, they do, when you do these manly things, that goes away. That desire to want to be, to be needy gets smaller and smaller because you get stronger and stronger. Do you see? So it's very important that men pursue manly things. Then, then actually the wife is happier because the man is not needy. He's already very strong in his mindset. That doesn't mean he's an oppressor or something. He can still be very gentle and kind. But mentally, and when he makes a decision, boom, it's going. There's no shaking. He won't shake. Right? So that's why it's very important for a man to pursue those kind of arts. And in Chani Gok, every man, every person has to learn those arts. That's just natural part of peace, police, peace, militia, because there's no centralized police, no centralized military. Everybody has to be the protector of their house, of their, uh, what is it, Maul, uh, the community, their little town. They have to protect it. They have to be the police. So with that sense of responsibility, then naturally you will learn those uh, arts that makes you stronger and in the arts that make you stronger, there's a natural respect. There's a respect that you will learn. Okay, I think that's a lot of questions. <laughs> there's One more. more. <laughs> Good morning and thank Good you morning. so much. <laughs> um, my question um, comes from, um, you know, as we try to you know, witness and talk about Sanctuary Church, you know, there's um, sometimes questions that are asked that we cannot, you know, we don't know. Um, Can you speak louder? <laughs> and um, it has to do, like, with a sequence of events, like, from the time that there was the, um, the letter um, from Spirit World um, saying that, um, you know, that, quote-unquote, dethroned H1, that had him leave, um, up until the time of your leaving the palace. So the one of the questions is, were you aware at the time that the letter was false? Um, and I mean, also the, the whole point, I think, which is very important to grasp is that that's the time when father was presiding. Yes. Right. So if father is presiding, he's the king, and we all follow what the king says. So. That's kind of, it's not for us to judge the king, it's for the king to judge us. I mean, Father is the Lord of the second heaven. He's God on earth. So if Father says, you know, H1, you're not my successor anymore, you're fired, and H2, you're the, you're the king, then he's the king. It's just that simple. Exactly. Yeah. So for, for me, it's not a question of, well, can we second guess Father's decision or were we going to say he did this right, he should have done that? No. I mean, Father's my king, so he's not only my father, he's my king. So when the king makes a decision, you just salute and say, yes, sir. And what else shall we do for you? <laughs> I, I agree. Long live the king, I agree, right? I agree. <laughs> <laughs> and just one last question, if I may. Um, that also comes up is... Um, at what point were you aware of 
mothers like um, betrayal or mothers we moving away from father. The problem is we always love mother and hope that she would do the right thing and we did not want to see the things that father saw. Mm -hmm. So father, if you look at his words, was talking about mother's betrayal and laying all the, the words necessary for people to understand what father was perceiving. From the son's position, I don't want to see it. So it's my problem. But after father ascended, it was very clear, undeniable that she was separated from father because mm -hmm. she basically called us in and said, I'm the Messiah, what do you think? And uh, we said, no, thank you. Thank so you. after we said no thank you to her being the Messiah, she wants, you know, she wants to cut off her heads. <laughs> 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 so then basically, you know, we have no choice but to carry on our lives with love and loyalty to our father. Yes. We did not pursue the path of, of glory and wealth. We pursue the path of love and loyalty, even if love and loyalty means that everybody in the world hates you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So before we, uh, oh, you got this. Uh, before we, you have time for one more? Or it's getting late. One more, just one, one more. That young person, young person up there. The young man up there. Yeah, if we don't cut it off, it won't stop. <laughs> Thank you very much for the wonderful blessing, holy blessing that uh, you bestowed us on this yesterday. え、一つ、あ、なんかえ、一つとちょっと簡単な質問一つしたいんですけれども、え、ま、7年の観難というふうにその軍人にが通行されている内容があると思うんですけれども、その7年を過ぎた時にその天地国のが I believe that uh, the king has said that there will be seven year uh, uh, judgment uh, and that uh, the uh, Henry Rick will uh, become substantial uh, right after the end of that uh, seven year period. です。え、その so actually it was my mother who uh, spoke before about uh, getting the water supply in the uh, farm and um, we are so we intend to survive this uh, judgment uh, using uh, Good. The, uh, rebus. Uh, so once that once that period is, is, is over then will uh, Hyung Jin, like Father did, will Hyung Jin be touring around the world? I think so. If you will tell us in advance what uh, Japanese cooking you enjoy, <laughs> then uh, we will prepare it uh, for your visit. <laughs> I think we like ramen. <laughs> <laughs> well, if we, if we go to Japan or different countries, we may take you into the wilderness. <laughs> we may not allow you to be in a hotel. <laughs> we may do bushcrafting expeditions. <laughs> then you have to go to Hokkaido. <laughs> Before before we end uh, this uh, program, we do have uh, a special request from uh, Richard Panther to talk about the the scorecard that has been put together and supported by uh, Cook to Them, and this is allowing people to understand clearly who uh, Trump is, what he stands for, and what Hillary is, and what she stands for. So uh, if you want to do something and have an impact, uh, please uh, take some of these cards and hand them out. Do you have anything? Richard, do you want? I think I just have something to say. 
That's what he was going to say. Pennsylvania, New Mexico, no. So this is the sort of truth. It's, it, it's, it's the word. So anyway, pass it around. And see uh, Clark Gingrich uh, for coordinating uh, local efforts. But I mean, you can take these. You can hand them out at the airport as you leave, too. That's also good at people coming back in <laughs> into the country. But anyway, uh, these are very important. Thank you very much. And uh, let us give a special round of thanks to both <laughs> Congressman and Congressman for this time. Okay, that's finished. Chamba hori ke kyongbe Haru. Thank you very much for giving us so much of your time. Very, very generous for your time. Thank you.